ゴルフ業界を盛り上げようということで始まりましたチェケラーゴルフそれではチェケラー So now we're going to talk about the infamous shallowing Shallowing? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do Luke Donald here This particular video I wanted to talk about shallowing because I know everyone loves shallowing. Everyone wants to hear about it more. So I figured I might as well give you guys some PGA Tour players and kind of what they talk about when they talk about shallowing. Donald, who, by the way, was probably one of the best iron players when he was playing really good and was a world number one, he was talking about how professional golfers tend, as they get to the top of their swing, if anything, they're starting to move towards flexion. Doesn't mean they actually go towards flexion, but they're moving towards it. As opposed to amateur golfers are actually moving towards extension, which would be the opposite, right? Now, to kind of give you guys maybe a little bit more information about this, that doesn't mean, like I said, they're doing this, like a John Rahm or a DJ. You have plenty of tour players that are actually pretty cuffed with their wrists, and they're actually still moving towards flexion, but they're still extended at the top of the swing. So all they're trying to say is you're moving towards it, not that you're actually trying to get flexion. That's a big key point, I think. Now, in her opinion, I know I'm sure she's probably heard this before because I've seen it in her videos, but like, give me maybe her explanation of why she thinks that helps shallow the club. Um, but I'm shallow, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things I like to talk to my clients about, like, if you do have a little bit more on the flexion side, it would make it tougher to steepen the club shaft. Now, it's still possible because really it's forearm rotation that causes the pitch of the shaft to steepen. But whenever you're getting the face more shut at the top of the swing, you naturally would not want to kind of go like this because you would feel like the golf ball would go way left. That's kind of the main point they're trying to get across. So I think the important thing for maybe you guys at home is if you flex, that doesn't mean that you're going to be shallow. Think about it more so as it's not a direct correlation, it's more just kind of maybe making it easier for it to happen. Right? Now, in her personal opinion, like um, for her, what would be like some parameters that she thinks is good shallowing and bad shallowing? <laughs> and I think that for a feeling, I feel like for a lot of people out there that are watching this, probably might not be a horrible feeling because people are so steep these days. But for a lot of people out there, actually, and a lot of my clients, I, I would say that's wrong because they get way too shallow and then they're way underneath the plane. They have a hard time squaring the face. Let's have her actually address the ball for me real quick and have her swing up to the top and stop for me. Okay, so I'm gonna get her into like a very, let's call it shallow position, which would be kind of here, right? Would she agree? So now tell me, does she feel like a lot of pressure right here? Yeah, she feels like the club head wants to fall towards the ground. She probably also feels like it's probably difficult for her to get the club head to the ball from that position. Would you agree? Not Right. So you'd have to probably apply quite a bit of torque, right? Or a lot of basic torque force. And then you would also probably have to do what she just did, which is really move your body this way to kind of square the face, right? Well, if you think about it, to me, in my personal opinion, I feel like that actually slows down the speed of the club. And I kind of relate it to like uh, taking a turn in a car. So what she's kind of doing there is she's taking a super wide turn when she gets the club in that position and then trying to cut back to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've ever been in a car and you're with a good driver and they've taken the perfect turn, right? You don't feel like you're moving around in the car, correct? And that'll make you have you make it a more efficient turn and a faster turn. If you take a super wide turn, obviously the time of the turn is way slower. So for me, that's why I would say that there is such a thing as too shallow, right? But not to say that people can't try to feel that, because I feel like um, for a lot of people, feeling that might really help them. So I don't want people to ever not, you know, you can feel whatever you want to get the job done, but you need to hit certain checkpoints, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's try two swings here. We're gonna try one swing way behind her and then one swing in front, and then we're gonna kind of get her feedback. Yeah, okay, go to, go to P6 and swing one for me. Yeah, good, good, good. Where are you going? Yeah, then go ahead and hit. Where are <laughs> okay. That's perfect. So walk me through your feelings. So first thing, did you feel like your upper body wanted to kind of move forward mm. and towards the ball? Now, also in terms of pressure on the wrist and like how heavy the club felt, like how, how much pressure did she feel? Did she feel like she had like quite a bit of force and like kind of torque on that wrist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's try and hit another one. 
Okay. And we're going to get into a little bit more of a manageable P6. So let's have her come here. Let's be a little bit more, this would be maybe parallel, but maybe somewhere right around from here to here is okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay. That's okay. But in terms of the amount of force that she had to use with her body, did she feel like that force kind of went way down, right? Right? That's why I always say, I think for the people at home, sometimes they hear golf instructors, you know, saying like, too much, you can never have too much shallow. And I don't want to say those instructors are wrong. I think that's actually for a lot of people really helpful. But you should know there is a limit, right? There is a limit out there. Okay, so let's have her hit a shot, full swing shot, full speed, and then I'm going to give her maybe some parameters that we typically talk about with uh, shallowing. Is that Ricky Fowler? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go over maybe um, some checkpoints. So one of the first places I like to check, which you've probably seen before, oh, is position five. All right, so let's go draw an angle. So tell her the first place I always check is I draw an angle like such. And for you at home, I recommend doing something similar. Okay, so see how she's at 39 degrees. So for the people at home, I would say to start maybe anywhere from 30 to 40 degrees. Now that's a lot wider of a range than I typically teach my clients, but maybe for a beginner golfer, that's a better range. The reason for that is if I see people get into kind of that position there at P5, they tend to not get too flat and kind of into that compromised position we just showed you a second ago, right? Okay, the next position that we talk about is kind of like P5.5, so it's roughly right around here. So see how you're right around like 50 degrees here? This is actually just outside the range of okay for me. Maybe you could even call it okay, but it's a little steep for my liking. I'm preferably kind of right around in that range, so like kind of 57 degree range to kind of that 60 something degree range. For a lot of people at home, if you can get to where you are, I feel like they'd be pretty happy because I feel like a lot of people at home would be more so over here. <laughs> Next position is kind of right around here. And she is actually, see how she's kind of right on the forearm here? So this is actually ideal range for this position right here. Oh, you this. Yeah. So what happened was she kind of went to a kind of a flatter position to slightly on the steeper side and then to flat. So kind of the sequence of her shallowing is a little bit off for my preference, I would say. Not, yeah, not necessarily smooth. However, at the end of the day, if you hit the ball really well, I'm not going to tell you what to do, right? <laughs> that type of thing. So, okay, so that's kind of the parameter. So if you start to get right around here, Underneath the forearm, that's too flat. Anywhere above the forearm is way too steep at this point. Okay, and then we can go further and further and further, but if they want to watch maybe all those checkpoints, they can check it out on the membership site. We have a bunch of checkpoint webinars they can watch. Hey. Yeah. Hello, check it out golfers. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I hope I brought you guys some value with the video. And as well, big shout out to Yukino. Thank you so much for allowing me to film with her. She's such a natural. She did a great job, made me look good as a golf instructor. So real quickly, I wanna talk about my membership and specifically, if you're one of those people out there that have found that the golf instruction on YouTube can be really feeling based and that you're not really getting specific checkpoints or specific parameters, and that's something that you want in your golf swing change, then I want you guys to go check out my membership site. On the site, we have a bunch of webinars as well as videos with professional golfers where we kind of break down step-by-step -step exactly how to change your golf swing, exactly what checkpoint parameters are the parameters for you, and then also we show you how to actually film yourself and do everything yourself. And really, you can become your own golf coach. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and check out the link down below. And as well, if you sign up before May 20th, you guys are going to get entered into a raffle where you guys can win a full set of irons, pitching wedge through three iron. As well, you're going to get a fitting from a famous fitter, Satoshi Yoshida. And then last but not least, you guys are going to get a two-hour lesson from myself. So go check out the link down below. I hope to see you guys in the membership. Thank you! Thank you very much! ということで、今回はコラボ動画ということだったんですけれどキウイコーチのオンラインサロンキウイプラチナムメンバーシップの方に動画が貼ってあるのでぜひそちらもご覧ください概要欄に貼ってあるのでそちらもチェックしてみてくださいはい、というわけでありがとうございましたありがとうございますキウイコーチのレッスンでしたそれでは Check it out!